Today I'm going to show you how I recycled some scrap pieces of oak wood flooring that would have otherwise gone to waste and used them to make a nice coffee table with a reversible top. I wanted to give a huge shout out to my friend Mike who recently replaced his floor and let me use the scraps for a project. As far as I'm concerned, most mics that I know are pretty great. Since this is wood flooring, my first step was to take out all the remaining nails. And these weren't 9 inches long, but they were definitely a huge pain. I had to use a drill to take out the nails. Probably not in the way you'd think though. I would let the drill wrap itself around the nail, and then let it twist the nail off. Probably not the greatest thing, but that's what warranties are for. Since this is wood flooring, there's a groove on each side of the wooden boards. And this is what's going to make it easier to line everything perfectly. I started piecing together my boards using the system, and I made sure that this was at least 33 inches in both width and height. Right now we're setting up the foundation for what's going to be the bottom of the tabletop. Once I had a nice layout, I transferred this over to another flat surface upside down. And making sure to keep the same staggered pattern that I created, I started gluing all the pieces together. To do this, I just poured some glue into all the grooves where the wood connects. All I needed for now was for this to be held together. Alright, so that was the bottom of the tabletop, now we're going to make the top of the tabletop. So I followed the same system and made sure the dimensions were similar. I started laying these boards over the bottom of the tabletop because the plan was to glue them together. Notice that I'm sanding the edge of each board before laying out the tabletop. This is because those same edges might have been a little bit harder to reach if I had waited until later to sand them down. And you can see those edges a little bit more clearly here. I started laying the tabletop on the bottom of the table and I made sure to glue all the pieces together. I'm putting wood glue in every groove, but also on the bottom of each board. Wood glue is super strong, and this is going to make sure that our tabletop sticks to the bottom of the table. We're essentially laminating the two pieces together. I also made sure the wooden boards were perpendicular to each other, because I felt that this would be extra reinforcement. Alright, so jumping back into the idea of the grooves on the boards. In order to make the table legs, we had to get rid of these. I ran these through the table saw, and I made sure to take about a fourth of an inch off each side. We need these to be perfectly square if we want to make some nice legs. This part took forever, but when you see the base, I think you'll think it's worth it. Once I was done running the soon-to-be legs through the table saw, I found pieces that were about 20 inches long, and I glued them together. The wooden boards are pretty thin, so this is just going to make sure that our table legs are a little bit thicker. This is essentially what we did for the tabletop. I did that four times, and then I let them dry overnight. The wood glue had dried by the next day, so I came back and started working on my tabletop. The first thing I did here was mark out the center. Then I grabbed a straight piece of scrap plywood, and I drilled that into the center. At this point in time, I figured this was going to be the table's bottom, so the hole didn't really matter. I drilled a hole big enough to fit a sharpie tip on the other end, then I stuck a sharpie through it, and drew my circle. And taking this back to geometry, you're essentially making a compass, which is going to let you make a perfect circle. I wasn't really happy with the size of my first circle, so I made another hole and drew out another circle. But at least you get to see it again. After that, I used my circular saw to cut off some of the leftover pieces while making sure to avoid the circle. This part honestly took forever, but it was very oddly satisfying. It was important to take off all these big remaining pieces because I planned on using a router to make a perfect circle. And the more we can take off the edge, the less resistance that wood is going to give the router. I screwed a thick board into the center so that we can make a perfect circle again. Except this time, I attached a router to the board. And with the router, we can easily take off any leftover wood outside of the line. To do this, I just used a straight router bit. This bit is essentially a spinning blade that's going to make it easy to cut off any excess. Once that was done, I switched over to a flush trim bit and turned my table over. You can see how far down the straight bit got, so we had to remove the remaining wood. The little wheel on the flush trim bit uses the original line as a guide, and the blade cuts off anything remaining. After that was done, I used a chamfer bit just to give the top of the table a nice little edge. And you can only imagine how messy this process was, so I made sure to clean right afterwards. Once the mess was clean, I wanted to have a mess again so I started sanding. Keep in mind that this used to be wood flooring, which means it's pretty resistant to any damage. It took so long that it literally used two sanders for part of it. But it was really nice to finally see a clean surface. Once that was out of the way, I started cutting my table legs. I made these about 16 inches and a half, so that the coffee table would be about 18 inches with the added height of the tabletop. After I made one leg the right size, all I had to do was line up the other legs, and then use the original leg to determine the size. And of course we wanted to sand our legs too, since we want everything to match. Also, if you like what you're seeing, be sure to like and subscribe so that I can keep making videos like this in the future. Alright, the legs were ready, but I had to make the stretcher. 
My table was 31 inches in diameter, so my stretcher had to be 27 to leave room for the legs. I made the cut, and I started mapping out my design. With the legs, the stretcher looks something like this. The other stretcher would simply be perpendicular to the first one. I also cut some smaller pieces to size, just to make sure that all the gaps are filled. I'll show you what I mean in just one second. We have the long stretcher, and these two lines indicate where the two stretchers are going to cross. I had to make sure that everything was evenly spaced. The two stretchers had to intersect perfectly, and the distance between those and the legs had to be equal as well. You'll notice that I put down a smaller piece of wood to fill in some of the space. That's what I meant by filling the gaps earlier. So when I laid everything out, it looked something like this. I took it all apart, and I started gluing the boards together so that they would permanently hold this shape. To hold this all together in the meantime, I just drilled in some screws. So now we can let these dry overnight, and the end result should look something like this. This is basically mimicking a half lap joint. The next day, I took the screws out and got to sanding again, all while enjoying a really nice storm. I had my legs and the stretchers ready, so I started working on the tabletop again. My wife really liked the color of this natural wood, so all we did was give it a clear coat. This is Verithane's water-based polyurethane, and it's basically going to give the surface a protective layer, since coffee tables tend to have contact with other things. I like this product because it does a great job, and once it dries up, the color of your wood is unaltered. I let that dry, and I started working on the legs again. To make things super easy for myself, I just used pocket holes from the stretcher to the legs. I used two screws at every joint, just to give it some extra reinforcement. I had to do this a total of 8 times, 4 times for the bottom, and then 4 times for the top stretchers. To make sure everything was super precise, I used a 90 degree clamp between the stretchers and the legs. After that, drilling in the pocket hole screws was the easiest part. And since these holes will only be present at the bottom of the stretchers, or right under the tabletop, you're never going to see them. Two legs down, and I had two more to go. And it's always really nice when things fit the way they're supposed to. I applied some glue to the intersection, and then held these together with a clamp. I attached the top stretchers, and we were all set. Just like the tabletop, I also gave this a protective layer, and of course I had some help. The base was really coming along, but I wanted to do one last thing to secure it. I drilled a screw into the top and bottom intersections, just to give the base some reinforcement. I always like to put some furniture pads on the bottom too, just to avoid scratching the floor. And at the top of the stand, I added some rubber bumpers to hold the tabletop up. This is what will allow you to have a reversible table without scratching up any of the surfaces. I turned the tabletop over, and I gave it a weathered gray stain. And once that dried up, I gave it a clear coat, just like I did on the other side. And now that that's done, it's time for the big reveal, as soon as Riley gets out of the way. You can tell that she's just as excited as I am.